Hello and welcome to Sunshine Plus, your ideal TV program powered by the Ondo State Government. I am Dapo Arua Joy. Normally, we used to give you three stories in a half hour due, but today it is a different ball game. The Sunshine State means business, and the first citizen, Arakuni Oluwarotimi Akeredolu SAN, is seriously demonstrating it. He is calling on development partners to join his administration to fashion out a 25 year development plan towards frogleeping the development and prosperity of the state. A week-long summit tagged Develop Ondo 2018 is already ongoing in the state capital. Akure. The Ondo State Government, under the leadership of Arakuni Oluwarutimi Akure de Lusan, invites regional and international development partners, trade mission of embassies in Nigeria, donor agencies, high net worth individuals, and philanthropists, captains of industry, as well as friends of Ondo State, to a high profile event, Develop Ondo 2018, which will feature Development Partners Summit and the relaunch of Ondo State Education Endowment Fund, geared towards raising money for the development of education sector in the state. You are all invited. It's a great opportunity that you cannot afford to miss. We welcome you to Ondo State. Coming up on Wednesday, 21st and Thursday, 22nd November 2018 at the Odo State International Center for Culture and Event, the Dome, Accra. The summit will be declared open by His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshimajo San, GCON, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at 9 a.m. Ondo State, the Sunshine State and a hub of investment opportunities. Develop Ondo 2018, Innovation in Governance. So Sunshine Plus has deemed it fit to take a look at efforts to develop on those states and their abundant potentials waiting to be harnessed. Now sit back and enjoy a documentary entitled The Rising Sun. On those states, also known as the Sunshine State, was created on the 3rd of February 1976 from the former western region. It is located in the southwest geopolitical zone of Nigeria. With a population of around 4.7 million, Ondo State, which is majorly made up of the Yoruba people, are known for their hospitality. The state has a landmass of about 15,000 square kilometers and it geographically lies entirely in the tropical belt. From the north to the central and down to the south, the state is naturally endowed. The plain vegetation of Akoko, the beautifully arranged rocks of Idori, and the long and deep untapped coastlines of Ararobi are all sinusio, meant to be taught and explored. The people are blessed with diverse culture, amazing hearts, rich traditions and wonderful cuisines. The state is not only blessed with abundant natural resources, but also well endowed with resourceful manpower. Ondo State is largely an agrarian community and is one of the major sources of timber for building construction and furniture making. In the humid rainforest of the state, there are cash crops such as oil palm, sugarcane, cashew, mango, kola nut, plantain, rubber, and cocoa, also found in large quantity, are principal stable crops such as rice, yam, maize, and cassava, as well as a number of fruits. Fishing is a major occupation of the people in the Southern Senatorial District. The state is unarguably regarded as the most naturally endowed in terms of potentials among other states in the Southwest. According to research findings, Ondo State is home to bitumen deposits, which is said to be the second largest in the world and largest in Africa. This resource is primarily useful for road construction and building materials. It is no longer news that Ondo State is one of the oil producing states in Nigeria. At the moment, it is on record that Ondo State is responsible for 12% of 
of the nation's oil and gas output. Apart from bitumen, oil and gas, Ondo State is also blessed with other mineral resources which are scattered in every nook and cranny of the state. These mineral resources include clay, granite, limestone, coal, columbite, tin, among others. The state possesses the longest untapped coastline in Nigeria, around 180 kilometers long, with natural depth of 14 meters and 18 meters, allowing for the construction of deep sea ports, capable of handling the largest class of container vessels, thereby saving cost for ship-to-ship -ship activities less than 40 kilometers via the coast and inland waterways to Lagos. Nigeria's biggest commercial nerve center. From the very beginning, successive administrations had developed various blueprints aimed at industrializing the state, both with little or no impact. At the inception of his administration, the sixth democratically elected governor of Undo State, Arakumi Uluwarotimi Akere Dulu, SAN, reeled out mouth watering incentives to potential investors to attract different foreign investments into the state. Apart from incentives such as tax holiday, Arakumi on several occasions also assured intending investors access to law and legal framework to guarantee safety of investment in the state economy and most importantly an environment that is safe and conducive for business. The idea really is to invite as many industrialists as you can get both in Nigeria and outside the country come to participate for them to know the potentialities that we have and we explain to them what we are prepared to do to ensure that they do their business with every ease as they can get any other place. Uh, when we talk about ease, we talk about tax holidays, we talk about providing them with uh, land and ensuring their security and doing everything. Well, security is key in everything we do because a lot of uh, investors or industrialists, they get scared readily if you have one breach of security in any circumstance. So we know, we want to assure them that look, this is a safe state. Armed with his administration's five-point agenda tagged JMPPR, that is job creation through agriculture, entrepreneurship and industrialization, massive infrastructural development and maintenance, provision of functional education and technological growth, provision of accessible and qualitative health and social service delivery, and rural development and community extension services. The governor has been able to impact on the lives of his people positively, thus creating an ideal environment for business to thrive. One and a half year down the line, several development-driven policies and projects have been put in place by the Akere Dolu administration. Most of these developmental projects are ongoing across the three senatorial districts of Wondo State. These giant strides include massive infrastructural development, that is road construction and rehabilitation, with over 45 kilometers of roads delivered in 18 months. Federal roads like the Owa Ikare Road, that were vet traps to motor rehabilitated by the administration. Several roads connecting villages to the market were also fixed or constructed. In the area of education, the Akere Dula administration of recent approved access to one billion naira budgetary provision 
dedicated to the renovations of secondary schools across the state. By the grace of God, today we have touched over 400 schools. And it's for me, when I listen to some people, like if I talk about uh, the mom of Akure here, when I listen to him, he gave a pictorial of what befell some of our schools. He said, before I came, the Muslim school in Akure here had, was no longer existing. The students and everything, population came almost as low as 30. The whole Muslim school, primary school. But that when we came, the mud, mud houses that existed and co broke them down, built new classrooms. The ones that are good, refurbished them, repainted them, put a uh, borehole, put toilet, have uh, solar for light in the, in the classrooms and co. That, to a surprise, as of today, the population has risen beyond 120. They are growing. People have returned back to school. And this has happened everywhere. I mean, the man can be interviewed. It has happened everywhere. The administration is also committed to improving the health and well-being of all citizens of the state by putting the primary health care also high on the priority list. He demonstrated this by distributing medical equipment to health centers across the 18 local government areas of the state of recent. The agriculture sector has also received unprecedented government intervention from time to time. Just of recent, Arakuri distributed thousands of improved seedlings of cocoa and cashew to farmers across the state. In the area of rural development and community extension services, the administration has been able to provide portable water across the nooks and crannies of the state, most especially in the rural communities. In his bid to take the state to another level, Arakuri embarked upon some landmark projects that will enhance economic prosperity of the state. They include the recently awarded 50-kilometer road project in conjunction with NDDC, from Araromi area in the Lajen local government area of the state to Akodo in the Bejuleki local government area of Lagos. It will open up many communities to benefit from the huge coastline. Work has also commenced on the most needed flyover interchange across Lagos Shagamu Expressway in Ore. When completed, the usual loss of lives, property, and productive manhouse will be prevented while free and safe human and vehicular activities in the area will be guaranteed. The state government, under the leadership of Arakuni, has since embarked on reform initiatives aimed at improving governance, transparency, accountability, security, and building an investor-friendly regulatory environment towards private sector participation in the economic development of the state. Arakuri's understanding that sustainable development in the state can only be achieved with partnership with the private sector as an engine to economic development is already paying off. For example, under the PPP arrangement, the governor has also flagged off OFL Marble and Granite Company site at Afo in Osel local government area of the state, where production has already begun. The project, when fully completed, has the capacity to produce 1.5 million square meters of granite yearly, and it will be the biggest in Africa. Another feat is the Twin Cities Agreement and MOU signed by the Odo State Government 
and Lingin Municipal Government of Chandong Province of People's Republic of China. No fewer than five new companies are investing at the Ondo Lingin Industrial Hub in Ore, in the Southern Senatorial District. As of today, five industries are about to take off. Outside the afforestation, which principally we started with, today we have cassava to ethanol. Cassava is being cultivated at large scale. Several hectares of cassavas have been cultivated and the ethanol industry itself is almost completed. That is one industry. We also have there today what we call plywood, MDF. And I think it's only MDF factory in Nigeria. Large production being sold everywhere, all over the country. That is another industry. We also have today um, almost completed a paper mill within the Linyi, Ondo Linyi Industrial Park. We also have today already completed textile mill. So, and other industries are coming up. So it's not just Ondo Linyi, it's just, it's not, it's just the old industry. It's an industrial park and everything is happening there. Not far from it, we, all, we have ESMIC Industrial Park who are, that are about taking off. And we also, the I mean, our people will have to excuse us, but we have no option. Let's make it there, but around the Laje, another industrial park is about starting, which is the Ondo Guangzhou Industrial Park. Those ones are coming to start. Today, by next week or week after, the Southwest Bitumen is going to start in the Rilly area and co. For the first time, we are going to have the proper exploration, exploitation, and everything, mining of bitumen in Nigeria for the first time. So those are the things that have been done. Uh, we we'll talk about other agro-line industries here and there, some in Okebo, where we have uh, uh, for palm canal and production of oil, that has started. You are, I'm sure some of you were there when we went to declare the, the factory open. So, so many others here and there. For easier access to the state by investors and visitors, the Ondo State Governor sought the revitalization of the state airport. Aside the daily Lagos Akure Airpiece passenger flights and the regular overland flights to Abuja, the airport has the potential of being a major cargo hub in West Africa. And imagine having a deep sea port, an industrial city, and a free trade zone all on the same site. Thousands of jobs will be created through the project. Most importantly, it will link the state to the international community and thus contributing immensely to the GDP of the state and the nation in general because it will facilitate the easy export of mineral resources which are in large quantity in the state. They have done a lot of work and I'm sure that uh, by early next year, by the time we are advertising, by the time we have had the license and co, their work will come out to show the potentials that we have in this country, in Ondo State, and that that port will serve, in particular, when you consider it's nearness to Lagos. That means all those congestion in Lagos, Lagos is waiting, is is busting and looking for where to support it. And the nearest place to it is Ondo State. So Port Ondo will serve the country now at a point of need, because whether we look like it or not, our import will still increase. And we also have to export. As our industries are growing, now mining, I started in many respects. We want to have bitumen. We want to export. It cannot be for local consumption alone. There are a lot of things that have been done, tin, 
like we have several minerals in Ondo State, a lot of things. So even if we have what we can call a mining port, so that most of these things we mine and coal want to export. But I know that Ondo, the port Ondo cannot be just a mining port. It is the only port that will salvage the crisis we have with Lagos. And I believe that the, the earlier even the country comes up, you know, port is about, it's, it's, it's a national thing. It's not the federal government, but the state can facilitate it. And that is why we are committing a lot of funds towards uh, all the necessary uh, studies and it's almost completed. The studies are clear that look, we have these facilities waiting to be tapped. And, and, and that, I'm sure, we encourage some of the industrialists that are coming. So that by the time you are building your industry, the gestation period and co, you almost step into when the port will be alive. The Ondo State Government has equally realized the significant role of development partners programs designed for an economy such as Nigeria's in attracting long-term investment in such economies for sustainable economic growth and social development. We want to project Ondo State in the global perspective for the development partners to see us as we are, to see the efforts we are making and to lend a helping hand to achieve that desired goal. I know it's a global goal for people to enjoy the minimum quality of life around the world. Likewise, in Ondo State, the desire of um, the administration of uh, Luaru Timi, uh, Akiri Dolu SAN, our own Arakuri, to ensure that every citizen of Ondo State has access to that minimum level of quality of life that befits a citizen of the, this millennium. For example, quality schools uh, in the conducive atmosphere, quality health, that everybody can have access to quality health, whether you have money or you don't even have money. And then um, roads and infrastructure, utilities and amenities, our roads are in bad shape. We need a helping hand to bring all this together. That is what we expect at the end of the day. We expect some of our development partners to take position in some of these critical areas. Say, come, we can do this for you. Towards this, the Ondo State Government is using all opportunities to attract investors, donor agencies, financial institutions, international development partners, international oil companies, conglomerates, and other relevant stakeholders to the Sunshine State to explore the economic potentials especially in those sectors of its comparative advantage so as to know where to invest or assist and they will not regret taking such decision. For those states, the sun is indeed rising. The Ondo State Government, under the leadership of Arakuni Uluwaru Tibiakiri de Lusan, invites regional and international development partners, trade mission of embassies in Nigeria, donor agencies, high net worth individuals, and philanthropists, captains of industry, as well as friends of Ondo State, to a high profile event, Develop Ondo 2018, which will feature Development Partner Summit and the relaunch of Ondo State Education Endowment Fund, geared towards raising money for the development of education sector in the state. You're all invited. It's a great opportunity that you cannot afford to miss. We welcome you to Ondo State. Coming up on Wednesday, 21st and Thursday, 22nd November 2018 at the Odo State International Center for Culture and Events, the Dome, Accra. The summit will be declared open by His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshimajo San, GCON, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at 9 a.m. Ondo State, the Sunshine State and a hub of investment opportunities. Develop Ondo 2018, innovation in governance. Well, that's it on this edition of Sunshine Plus. I remain your host, Dakbo Aruajoe. Thank you for watching and see you next time. God bless the Sunshine State.